Betsy and Thomas here for the American Intelligence Media, where today we're decoding Trump tweets of October 3rd and 4th, which really are all about, the majority of them are about Brett Kavanaugh. So we've decided just to turn the show today into focusing on Brett Kavanaugh. Yes, I topped off that cappuccino and I am ready to go. Yeah, I know you are. Now, here's how we're going to start. Uh, Terry is an Aim for Truth uh, reader and she sent a question and I thought she did an excellent job framing the the comment, the questions, what I'm seeing from a lot of people. She says, I am so confused regarding the whole Kavanaugh mess. Trump probably didn't want to nominate him for SCOTUS. Now Trump verbalizes support. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh endorses military tribunals, but is not support, but is supporting in many ways the socialist communist agenda. He's backed by the Bush dynasty. He clearly got advanced in his career, aiding Starr and protecting the Clinton dynasty. And don't get me started with him in this Patriot Act. He and his wife are SES, which our, our listeners know as Senior Executive Service, and he has an unusual relationship with his mentor friend Priest. And so... She wants to know, Thomas, like, come on, be straight. Our listeners can handle it. Tell us what's really going on. Well, that is a great question. That's what everybody's asking. And the conclave cave is empty because everybody's just at home watching the boob tube, watching the politicians make an ass of themselves. All of them, no matter who they are, unless they just stand there and have some integrity and just kind of be quiet and say, it's the president's... Uh, Appointee, uh, of course, I'm going to confirm them. Because really, it would not have mattered who Trump nominated for this. And maybe our European listeners need to understand, or you can explain this before you get started. It didn't matter who it was going to be. Whoever he threw in at this particular time was going to be eaten up. Let's just try to make this clear for people. It's very complicated. Brett Kavanaugh goes both ways. He is neither... a a conservative or a liberal. He is whatever he appointed person who appoints him makes him. So he was appointed as a conservative and he is ruled as a conservative, as a judge. But remember, he wasn't a judge before that. He wasn't a lawyer. He never tried a case. He was a clerk. And as a clerk, he was asked to write for both sides, depending upon who was in office and whose shoes he was shining. And so he is a good writer and, and he's a good researcher. And that's where he should stay, as you saw, the way that he lost his cool beyond imagination. Beyond imagination, he would have been held in contempt of court if he was in his own court. He needed to be calm and cool, and he needed to expect this. But why did he react? Not because he was an aggressor on females, which is very clear. The FBI report says there was absolutely no sexual improprieties, no one who could corroborate anything like that. They talked to all of the witnesses, and they made a huge report and they can all go read it. What does it say? The same things the previous security investigations said. And why would that be? To reach the position he was already in, he had to go through incredible scrutiny. And then to go back years before he was ever appointed to a, such a high court is absolutely ridiculous. But it doesn't matter. Just as you said, Betsy. Trump knew what he was doing. He took a monkey wrench, threw it into the works. Well, I don't know that, it, from what we gather, it, this was really put upon him by Justice Kennedy, who was retiring. You know, yeah, I'll go ahead and retire, but I want the clerk that I like the best, Brett Kavanaugh, to be nominated. Absolutely. These clerks are actually the judges. The judges, it's fake justice. And when you look at the Supreme Court, it's the supreme fake justice. They're appointed as partisan, and they stay partisan. And many of them ha are, are being blackmailed. I mean, look at Judge Roberts and that ruling he made at the, uh, you know, at the very end of this Obamacare fiasco. They're now even pointing out sitting judges' faults that had slipped through and never got mentioned during their confirmation. And you can find all kinds of problems. Trump knows he's going to be reelected a second term, he'll appoint at least another judge after this one. So this one, do you think he is out of his mind? No, Trump knew exactly what he was doing. He is the pro of being able to control reality television, whether it be Survivor or uh, his show, uh, The Apprentice, or any of these shows where it's live, up front, everybody's watching, everything's at stake, and you need to learn how to work people. Because if you can't work people, don't get in 
to the business because it's usually about working people. Unless you're Judge Kavanaugh who got to sit in somebody's chamber and write because he was a very good writer. Now, Judge Kavanaugh, as a judge, has uh, demonstrated himself to be somewhat conservative, but this is the man. Uh, uh, This is the man who, even in writings before the U.S. Patriot Act, which makes me think that he was in on the U.S. Patriot Act and was probably one of the principal writers of it, since he so quickly came out with judgments that said that parts of it were absolutely what was needed, which empowered Robert Mueller and John Brennan to turn all law enforcement towards nothing but terrorism. The U.S. Patriot Act took away the U.S. Constitution, our Republic, our, the U.S. Bill of Rights. It took away everything. And it was changed by Obama into the U.S. Freedom Act, which actually broadened it. And then they broadened it with a military act through appropriations called the National Defense Authorization Act. And he knows every bit of this. So when Lindsey Graham was set up to ask the questions, will you put the Democrats who worked with foreign nations? Well, he didn't ask to, if the Democrats. Yeah, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing it. Right, but that's really what he was asking. Yes, Lindsey Graham was baited to be the John McCain, and now Jeff Flake has stepped up to try to be the John McCain. They're trying to speak John McCain's words from beyond wherever John McCain is until Mitt Romney gets there. There has to be that senator who stands up and says, I will vote against the PAC, and I will stand up and I will control the whole thing. Yeah, Isn't that beautiful? It, come, it could come down to one vote on this, and so people are going, which way is it going to go? Well, that's because we, we the, it's split so, so closely. You know, it's a 49-51 vote. It's a 50-50, and you need the tie broken. What we need to do is to get beyond this and create such a red tsunami in the midterms, that the Susan Collins votes of the world don't even make a difference to us because we drowned her out with what patriots want. So we, the patriots have infiltrated, really, the Republican Party, and now we're just slowly weeding these rhinos out. And when you look at what Trump has done with this Kavanaugh hearing, it's just amazing because he, you know, he keeps saying, oh my gosh, Brett's our guy, and look what they're doing to him and the questions they're asking. He is whipping his base into a frenzy, much like George Soros has been whipping the left base in a frenzy, but of course they're getting paid. And so Trump is kind of doing the same thing with the um, Republican base. Do you see the crowds of people at his rallies? He called it an American Revolution. And the Brett, K- Brett Kavanaugh confirmation hearings uh, in the Senate committee, Judicial Committee, uh, then going into the full Senate for a vote, is an American revolution because you get to stand up for what is right and you get to see that the Democrats rule by mob action. They're a pack of wolves. They lie, they steal, they cheat. All they're putting forth is themselves, a Cory Booker, Spartacus, who basically lied and made it look like he was doing something noble when he knew that the documents he was releasing had already been released. Kamala Harris, who came up with a fake letter signed by Jane Doe, literally puts that into evidence in that hearing when she knew for a fact, which should put her in jail, or at least have a charge brought against her for obstructing the uh, actions of a Senate hearing, especially for a Supreme Court Justice. I mean, this is one of the worst crimes you can commit. Dianne Feinstein, what she did, she showed that just like the Russian dossier, she was at the heart and she was the one who supposedly had the upright statue because she was the old stature, that she was the oldest there. So therefore, the letter in her hand really mattered, though she wouldn't show anybody it. But it was released to the news to her own group. So, you know, Kamala Harris's claim was uh, someone raped, that, that, that Brett gave a, 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 someone a ride. And when you read this story, the person says they're a teacher, but the story is written like a third grader, so uh, they wouldn't be a teacher for very long. And the story is completely ridiculous. All the stories are ridiculous. We get to see that good old Christine Blasey Ford is really a CIA agent. She is literally a recruiter for the CIA when she works at Stanford. In the but ex- her FBI agent friend is the one that helped her prepare for her polygraph test. 
Yes, and remember the guy that she was uh, a partner with for all that time knew nothing about any of this, but certainly did say uh, that she was very loose after that, and her best girlfriend said she was as loose as crazy and made all kinds of allegations I won't even repeat, but if any of them are true, then she, she is the predator. She is not the victim. But Thomas, um, to go back where I uh, left off, is that if you look at this at a higher level, you see that no matter who Trump would have thrown in there, they were going to have a rough time um, because the left is waking up realizing, oh my gosh, we're losing seats in the Supreme Court. That's a big wake-up call. And Trump is using this to whip up his base because he needs all of us to get out there and vote for the midterms. The midterms are very, very important here in America because this will create the red tsunami that he needs in order to get his agenda through. Now, that's going to greatly affect people around the world because what we're trying to do here is to take down George Soros and this globalist rollout. And once we do it here, then people around the world can be more effective doing it in their countries. Absolutely. The New World Order of George H.W. Bush that was declared at the United Nations has been abnegated. It has been closed. And the time of true nationalism, true patriotism, really patriotism is the word that Trump used, has begun. And the overthrow of globalism is complete because the mechanism of globalism was to drain America of money into globalist interests. And that has ended in so many senses. For instance, you know, the International Criminal uh, Justice Court wants to make a judgment, well, we just pull out of it. (laughs) If the United Nations wants to do something that we don't like, well, we just, we're not going to fund you anymore, we're gone. This happened in just the last week. Trump went there and basically told them, if you, we're not participating in globalism at all, period, and we're not playing your game anymore, and we're ending your Human Rights Committee, and we're ending your World Trade Organization corruption, basically uh, a monopoly. It was basically uh, racketeering, as it were, on a global scale. He's ended all of that. He's ended OPEC. He's ended the way that U.S. aid works. He has brought us trillions and trillions of dollars. So now it isn't the New World Order that rules. It's the Patriot Order that rules. And, and these patriots national. are all around the world. Yes. And so if you look at that Brett Kavanaugh confirmation hearings in the Senate committee, we had told everyone that Trump doesn't care. He's This is for the election. He had to sacrifice somebody, and he knew he was throwing, throwing them under the bus, but because he was so beautifully asked illegally to, uh, by certain people, and since I'm going to say that in one phrase and in another say something else, but not put them together, I will just say that Trump was very wise to take the suggestions and the people on his list, one of them on the list, shown like a like a, a red, it was in red, and that was Brett Kavanaugh. Why? Because it said over to the side, soy boy. He will do anything you want. He was on both sides of the fence. He has no spine. We have the blackmail on his early life, if we wish to use that, because he was victimized. And we know that he's clean otherwise because we know of the traumas. That's what they do with anyone who they put on the list, okay? They know what the FBI They're already groomed. knows. They're groomed. And then if you look at the way that he passed on up the ladder, he was groomed. And now he's being groomed for this because everybody, whenever anyone in, when everyone in D.C. says something, you know it's the biggest lie of all. And they all said Brett Kavanaugh is the greatest. And so Trump is simply repeating their words. He worked with what he had. He could have thrown a woman He wasn't going to sacrifice a good woman. We know who's going to be the woman that he's going to offer up, but we don't want to taint anything. But that's what will happen next, especially if Brett doesn't get confirmed. He will immediately suggest that person and she will go right through. He's not going to immediately suggest it because he's going to let his base get so whipped up with frenzy that this good man, Brett Kavanaugh, was not selected, that they will go to the polls and numbers we've never seen here in America. And that's what he needs us to do. Okay? Oh, no, no, you're right about that. So it doesn't really matter. And that's why I'm not really worried. Uh, you know, I'm very sorry that things got so ugly with Brett and his family. But he knew what he was getting to. He's a senior executive service member. He's worked for the Clintons and the Bushes. He's a big boy, you know. He'll get over it. He'll, he'll have his job. And he'll 
be just fine. But in the meantime, Trump, in my opinion, would be best to wait then till after the midterms. It's a clear landslide victory, and he can appoint who he wants. But what's most beautiful and clear about the whole thing is that people like Dianne Feinstein and Pelosi and Maxine Waters and Cory Booker and Kamala Harris and Pocahontas and all the ones who come out virtue signaling and yelling the loudest that they want to run for president, knowing that if Hillary runs, they all have to back off or they could be Arkansas. They just want money in their coffers. And so they'll back off, of course. But for now, they're just screaming for attention. But what they don't get is the louder they scream, the more any sensible Democrat will walk away from them. And when Obama recently joined the Socialist Party and went out with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and did you notice they couldn't fill a gymnasium, a high school gymnasium? These are the most pathetic attempts of people who are dying. They're in their dying throes. Like I always say, this is the extinction level event for the Democrat Party. And you know, when Trump lavishes praises on Brett right now, that's a good thing because should he get the vote and become a Supreme Court justice, he's going to remember, he's a human being, he's going to remember who supported him through this, and that was Donald Trump. And just going on to the future, we can say that Brett Kavanaugh is a giant rock thrown in a small pond, creating a huge wave. The next person he'll appoint will simply be a woman who won't make any waves at all, and she will be a female conservative who will actually be the one that the Democrats should be screaming about, and they won't because she's a woman. No, they won't because they won't have enough people in there to vote. Absolutely. And remember the fake, supremely fake court, supremely fake justice Supreme Court is just the most pathetic example of partisanism. So when they put someone in, they know what the vote is for the rest of the time they're on. Now, that's just pathetic. So they know that Brett Kavanaugh is both their guy and Trump's guy. They also know exactly who he is. They also know what the real report on the FBI would be. Now, think about this. Think of the genius of Trump. He took a person who the corrupt people said was the guy and threw him under the bus And he didn't care what happened. If he gets elected, fine. If he doesn't, oh, he had the biggest October surprise of all, which is, sorry, you all got so excited and thought that I cared. And because I keep saying the most superlative things about Brett Kavanaugh, it makes you go crazy. It makes you want to set your hair on fire and throw yourself into a volcano. You are just going insane. And there's an American Revolution standing up and saying, no, he's a good, decent man, which he is. It's good versus evil is what's been constructed. It's good versus easy. And it has nothing to do with Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah. It has nothing to do with Brett Kavanaugh. The good and the evil is shown on both sides of the aisle, both parties. It shows that the uniparty of globalism is being eradicated. And Trump is creating the red tsunami, exactly as you say, which is what's going to win. The big deal is this, and this is what they don't even understand. This is amazing. And it's really very much the issue. And here's the issue. First off, I got to frame it doesn't matter what happens with Brett Kavanaugh. Who cares? Let's say Brett's not there, which he isn't, and they already started. This is about impeachment. This is about the midterm when they think they're going to win back 24 house, 24 seats in the House, which is just sheer hallucination. But as their last-ditch attempt as they are dying and globalism is falling off the cliff, just like the Climate Accord, $5 trillion directly out of American taxpayer dollars, these things are falling off the cliff. The United Nations, just it's its incidental now. Who this cares? is their Alamo moment. This is their Alamo moment. This is their apocalyptic moment. Nancy Pelosi has said it more times than I can quote. This is the apocalyptic moment. We either get rid of Trump for whatever we can trump up or we are doomed. And they're right because this midterm is going to go for the Republicans. There'll be no more talk of any nonsense impeachment because they won't get a vote. It can't get the vote now. They've already tried. It couldn't even get it couldn't get any seriousness whatsoever. And the person who put it up should be impeached himself, Al Green. So what is Trump doing here? He has taken control of the situation. He doesn't care about Brett Kavanaugh. He's the more superlative he is, the bigger the explosion, and he wants the explosion because it shows everybody for who they are. He is the survivor. He's the last one on the island. Everybody else are running off like rats thinking that the island is on fire. 
Now, just as we are doing this recording, uh, Grassley, Senator Grassley, who is the head of the Judiciary Committee, has gone in and reviewed this new report from the FBI, and that he did that in the skiff room. I'm just kind of make sure everybody's up to snuff here. And he's come out and said there isn't anything here, so we need to go and vote. So they're going to have the vote. Uh, and I think that's scheduled for Saturday. I don't know how that works, but cloture is on Saturday, so yes. they'll, they'll be taking the vote. Yep. So then what you have now is you have three Republicans that are the swing votes. You have Lisa Murkowski from Alaska. You have Susan Collins from Maine. And then you have Jeff Flake from Arizona. And so these are your rhinos. What they do is they make you feel like you're making progress and they're going to vote your way. But at the very end, they're there to flip it and go the other way. And that's why we call them Republican in name only rhinos. But don't be surprised if other senators start waking up and maybe the vote doesn't even go the way they think. Correct. The vote in the committee went party line strictly. And that's the way it should go when it goes to the greater body because that's the way they get paid from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is to vote what the party tells you to vote. You know, the only crazy wild ones are Rand Paul, who can go either way. So until you even well, put the put it on the floor, you better find out what Rand Paul's vote is going to be. But Rand Paul says he'll support Kavanaugh, which I'm so surprised at when we look and see Kavanaugh's position on the Patriot Act. Rand Paul's very smart, and he was talked to Trump early on, with Trump early on. I believe that uh, Trump brings Rand Paul, one of the very few people, into what he's actually doing with his strategies. I've seen this again and again. Well, they play a lot of golf together. Well, he supports, he doesn't support Trump. His actions support Trump. Now, McCain isn't there. These three you just mentioned. Murkowski and Collins and Flake. Flake is trying to take McCain's voice, you see, because Mitt Romney hasn't arrived there yet. And I know you're going to go off on me and tell me that he shouldn't make it. And if we just stop the... Using electronic digital machines, which again, ES and S just got caught again and said immediately just everything we said. They they brought out and admitted in public, PC Anywhere can manipulate any of their voting machines. This was admitted, and yet they're going to go on with those machines. So that alone, that they admitted it, could then abnegate any vote, and there'd have to be a recount, and, mm-hmm. if, and everyone associated with them, especially if they're foreign actors, which some of these people are, Lord Malik Brown, and many others who have pieces of our electoral uh, digital machines and Optech, the software that runs them. So he knows these things, okay? he has he, He's seeing good results. The polls are always wrong, but he's seeing the good results from the votes so far. Anyone he's supported has had, in some cases, amazing rises in the number uh, in the polls and the responses in the votes. So the Republicans have been winning. There's no reason they're not going to win because uh, there couldn't be any better statistics. All the things they make reference to in a general, uh, in the presidential election, are all the highest marks that he could possibly get. The only thing is the ad hominems against him. In other words, the attacks against him. The horrors like Stormy Daniels, who are paid by David Brock to come out and make lies with uh, the f- lawyers who are literally ambulance chasing pathetic lawyers like Michael, what's his name, uh, Avenatti. Avenatti. Oh my lord! I mean, why? Why isn't his? Why does his license still exist? Why don't they take away his license to practice law with all the lies he tells? And then he comes up with another horror who then accuses Brett Kavanaugh. So what happened? If you ever wondered if Stormy Daniels was fake, oh well, look at the new horror that he brought up with the fake charges and her history that even the FBI says is not credible for one second. So imagine that. Grassley just revealed that poor, pathetic victim of 36 years. Oh, I got to cry a bit. Yeah, Christine Blasey Ford. Oh, let me let me cry. Yeah, let me get the tears away. She suffered all that time because Brett Kavanaugh, who probably at that time really didn't like girls that much anyway, you know, captain of the basketball team. They say maybe Skull and Bones. He's at Yale. He's the top in his class. He's the top in everything. He's pictured Hello? with Bush, with the Pope, with the Queen, the whole bit. I mean, you just look at the picture, and it's a loaded picture. He could have reached the president job, okay? This guy was prepared, and he had been set on the path. And that he reaches the Supreme Court is because 
on the list of what was 144, 145 uh, judges that were being recommended for the Supreme Court position, he chose this guy, not a woman who probably would have made it in without this gigantic uh, reaction, this explosion. I disagree. This position for this SCOTUS is very important to the left. Yes, but they can't attack a woman. I can't go. They would have found Guess what? A way. I can't go and write a letter to Diane Feinstein and tell her that that female judge, whose name I'm not going to mention, attacked me when I was young. They Guess what? That's not going to work. They, because remember, they have the ability to just drop stuff into files. Hillary Clinton owns. She has control of the encryption keys for the FBI. We really can't trust what comes out of the FBI with her in control. Well, that's the truth, and they could have put in fake evidence. You're right yes. about that. But in terms of what the public would think, you think the public would believe me if I said that she groped me and was going to rape me and it scared me for the rest of my life? I had to change the door in my house. I can't fly anymore. Oh, I fly everywhere. And No, uh, they would have said something else, that she was involved in some kind of child sex trafficking, you know, like kind of like with the Ann Romney situation down there in Atlanta. So there would have been ways. And all they want is to have the vote go bad so that it doesn't even get out of committee. Why? Because when they know that that person that they're going against is going to create a political problem for them, then they use this type of pathetic political subterfuge, which is taught to them from the CIA and the rogue CIA, but they're just not very good at it. Look at the pathetic job they did on this one. They couldn't have got a more CIA-aligned person than Christine Blasey, whose husband still works at the crooked CIA bank that her step, her grandfather started, which is known to be exactly that. Not only that, he owns Admiral Security Services that protects Comey and McCabe and all of the crooked cabal that have either been fired or stepped down. He is their security service. He also has a a huge financial group called uh, Business Development for Red Coats. Okay, hello, Red Coats. Does anybody know what that means? That means British. This guy is so corrupt that if you look into him, he's going to be exactly like Stephen Halper, who has three rogue CIA banks to this day in Washington, D.C. that launders money whenever they need it. Otherwise, they have no business, just when they need to launder money. And look at Stephen Halper. He was the British spy gate. So business development for redcoats. I would suspect that mm, Christine Blasey Ford's... uh, husband might not be a real straight guy. And oh, that's right. Uh, She is working on a project where you uh, use hypnosis to create scenarios that can pass lie detector tests, polygraph tests, because you go back and you, through hypnosis, manipulate a situation that did happen and and turn it so it looks like something else. Oh, that's exactly what she did, isn't it? The FBI found her to be not credible. So sorry, wolf pack, social democrat, crazy hair on fire liberals, Brett Kavanaugh was found to be as clean as he was the first six times. So yes, Terry, it is a mess. So Betsy, I'm glad you brought this question from a listener because it's very confusing. And I want to say one thing, a shout out, because I now understand through you and your team, there's a lot of people listening to us in Germany. So uh, somebody said, why don't you say something to the Germans? Here's what I'm going to say to you. George Soros has taken over the European Union. The liberal democratic excuse, which is not happening in your country because you're being invaded by Islamic fascists and you're only beginning to wake up to it, I guess, or at least the the top politicians are acknowledging that they're waking up to it. The common folk have to deal with this, obviously. I haven't been there in years, but I've been there many times all throughout Europe. But I'm so sorry for what's going on there. But what's really going on, don't worry, here's the relief. Nord Stream 1 and 2, all Trump has to do is take the sanctions off on that, and Europe becomes so rich that they can pay off George Soros' demand of $86 billion a year to keep the migrants where they're at, what but what he calls they, migrants. But what do they do with the migrants and all of the crime and everything associated with that right now? The vote's already been taken. 26 of 28 voted that in five years there will be no Europe, there will be no nations, and that we that they must return. But how do we return roll that back? all of the invaders? Okay. I'm calling them invaders. invaders. They called them migrants, but they are invaders because less than 2% of them actually work. How is this like the continuation of the Crusades? It's a, it's, well, remember, the Crusades, uh, we got to frame this if you want that truly answered. Do we have time for that? 
Uh, sure. Can if, I have people, five minutes on that? Listen, if people don't want to hear you, they'll just go to the next YouTube. <laughs> probably a nice little kitty on the screen. Well, Bessie, that's a, just just a, just a huge thing, and we happen to be working both on this side and across the bridge to the other side with the glass bead game with uh, Michael McKibben to discover what these crusades are really about. And we're, we ourselves are in kind of a crusade trying to realize what is the power that drove those people into those pilgrimages, into those crusades, and now into what we would call the reverse crusades. But it's not really the reverse crusades because the Moorish invasion of Spain and the Iberian Peninsula came all the way up into France until the Reconquista, the reconquering of Spain, pushed them back. And even then, they didn't destroy these fantastic Moorish castles, uh, which have never been bombed in Europe. If you want to go to Europe, just go to Spain and go to you know these astounding Moorish places, castles, the Alhambra and all the others that they built, because they're still preserved and they're beautiful. And they didn't believe in images, so they built amazing words. They used their script, the Arabic script, and built them into these buildings. But anyway... The Spanish created entire military orders that had to try to kick the Moors out of Spain, and they called it the Reconquista, in other words, the reconquering of Spain. And that started the entire chivalry and soldier of God and knight of God kind of thing. And so they would go on these pilgrimages to get rid of the Moors in Spain. And they did that partially. They didn't do it completely, and then they started to mix. And so all the legends and everything from the East started really enamoring the people in Spain and in France to say, hey, you know, the Holy Lands is, is the where everything's mixed together. So all the wisdom of the East was held in the Holy Lands in Jerusalem. So they started in droves, eight different crusades and many more that they don't count, eight major ones. People started going East on these pilgrimages, on these crusades to conquer the Holy Land to make sure that it would be Christian and that everyone could come there, uh, Jews, Arabs, Muslims, Christians, Coptics, everyone can come to Jerusalem because it's held so sacred. And so they built the Temple of the Holy Sepulchre. And for years and years and years, they fought over who was going to control Jerusalem. And then the relics came back. And so we are looking into all these different relics and looking at the way that the Holy Grail legends became what we call the Knights of Chivalry or the Courts of Love or the uh, Romance of the Rose, or the the the, um, the Courts of Love of Eleanor of Aquitaine, and uh, Marie of Champagne, and uh, Arthur and his Holy Grail, and Joseph of Arimathea. We're looking into all of that, and we still see that right now, we are not ready to have George Soros Open Society, New World Order, because we can't get along with each other. People in Africa don't really mix with people in Sweden very well. If you haven't noticed, take a look. They're now kicking them out. 26 of the 28 European Union countries voted to get rid of, to send back the migrants, all of them. As I said before, less than 2% of the, all the ones that have come over in, in the last few years, only 2% are actually working. So their plan doesn't work. George Soros convinced the European Union because he has... Most of the unelected officials who run the European Union in his pocket. And when you're talking about patriotism, that's Brexit. That's England. And when you're talking about globalism, that's the European Union. And you need to wake up because the Atlantic Council, the propaganda arm of the NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, that tells you that Russia has interfered in German elections and French elections and British elections. And they're trying to tell you, you know, there's been interference in the Brexit Yes, but that was not what you think it was, but that's what they're going to use to get a new vote there. And George Soros's soldiers are out on the street. And so basically, patriotism in Britain is going to be beat down by George Soros, and European Union is still being controlled by George Soros. You know, from one week to the next, Angela Merkel and George Soros decided that they were simply going to send the migrants back, and George Soros is going to charge the European Union $86 billion dollars to keep them there. And so we have, then the bottom line is, he at this point, he doesn't care about migrants. He just cares about money in his pocket. This is extortion. Yes, he wants chaos so that he can economically extort the European Union yeah. because he's conglomerated all of their central banks into one place where he can control it, and he controls the electorate of the European Union. Well, that's how a mobster would work in Chicago. Oh, he is a mobster. Okay. He's the ultimate oligarch. He's a global oligarch. And Angela Merkel is his tool. 
he convinced Angela Merkel to secretly take the oil from the Nord Stream 1 and possibly Nord Stream 2. We still don't even know that. But they are built to come into Germany, and she is now controlling the European Union's oil. But she's not even telling people. This is all secret. She also tried to give $413,000, avoiding U.S. sanctions, and give it to Iran. And now they have created a way, openly, where the European Union is going to go through a third party to still give that, um, well, let's just call it a uh, radical Islamic fascist regime in Iran, to give them that money and much more from the Germans, from the Brits, from the French. And they're going to go around the sanctions so that they can buy more missiles for Hezbollah and Hamas and for the Revolutionary Guard. But going back to Angela Merkel in Germany, you need to realize that in America, they started this a long time ago. We just re- we revealed with Michael McKibben's help and the good researchers at Americans for Innovation that Edith Ramirez, as part of the Federal Trade Commission, literally started this whole dragonfly thing that Eric Schmidt has accomplished in China, where you have social credits. Everyone who buys your information gives you a social credit, analyzes you, targets you, surveils you, and attacks you. I mean, let's take a basic thing. You go to the grocery store, they ask you for your ID number so you can get a discount, you know? And you go, oh, great, I'm going to get a discount. So you put your little number, your telephone number in there. Well, now that digital system knows who you are, what you buy, what your buying habits are at the grocery store, and all of that's being saved. And what did you get? Maybe a couple of coupons for something off, but you can't avoid it. Yes, and the uh, data mining and the data selling is bigger than you can yes, possibly imagine. And farmed. Hillary's right there. She's oh, yeah. right there. She's got all the crypto keys to control all the digital handshakes that allow every transaction to happen. Now, Trump through the United Nations just got through saying, no, 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 we don't need your refugees. And now we get the lowest amount of refugees coming into our country of all, uh, you know, in recent times. So what did he say? Keep the refugees near their home, stop the war and send them back. Well, that would stop the UN. The UN's number one way of making money is through refugees. The Pope's number one way of making money is through refugees. And who is the number one promoter of refugees in the world? George Soros, and he's got control of the European Union. He's got the death grip on the European Union. Fortunately, he's decided that the migrants are going back. He also paid for the boats. I told everyone this from the beginning. No one believed me. It's now the truth. Angela Merkel and the German government paid for those boats to pick up those migrants and bring them over to Europe. And it was George Soros who paid them all along the way and paid for the food and the water. He is the one who created those migrant paths across Europe. He is the new crusader, anti-crusader, coming out of Muslim lands, going into Christian lands, going to destroy the Christians completely. This is what they say. I'm not making this up. All their imams say the same thing. They're there to overwhelm them, to overpopulate them, and to have sex with everyone. That's why they rape everyone and say, oh, I didn't know rape was illegal. Now they have to teach. You, You don't go to jail for rape in Europe anymore. The people who got raped get re-educated so that they will somehow teach the people who rape them that rape isn't a good thing. And in, in Britain, it's the worst. And so we're having it happen in America. Wake up, Europe. We're waking up in America. We are winning the revolution in America. And Brett Kavanaugh is the monkey, is, is the uh, wrench in the monkey works that just makes everything, excuse me, the monkey wrench in the works that makes everything explode. It doesn't matter whether he gets in now. He will be so loyal to Trump. No one could be more loyal than that lapdog. But if he doesn't get in, oh, that's beautiful. It's going, There'll be an explosion on this. The mother of all bombs will drop on top of this uh, nuclear attack. It's just like it, it's. we're watching everybody explode. Could anybody in D.C. tell who they are? How about Hollywood? Is there anybody left in Hollywood who's evil who hasn't come out and shown their evil. That's what's going on. Floodlights, stage lights, all the lights are coming on on the swamp.